Hi, my name is Jazeel Gale. I'm a Jamaican-born filmmaker, currently living in Los Angeles. Um, I direct commercials, music videos, narrative films, and I'm also a writer and photographer. I feel like I found my voice when I worked on the film Beyond the Rainbow. Um, before that, I was making things or making things for my reel that I thought would be commercial. And not commercials in advertising, commercials in things that would, you know, get me the job or things that were really, you know, um, mainstream. And so I decided, you know what, Jazeel, why don't you make something you want to make? And when you kind of ask yourself that as a creative, um, you have to answer it. What, because what do you want to make? And I decided I want to make something fashion-y. I want to make something gay, which I am. I want to make something black and white, which I love. And I don't care about what format it is. I'm not going to say it's a narrative film, a commercial, an art piece, a PSA, a, a music video. It's going to be whatever it wants to be. And I tasked myself with just making this thing. Forget festivals, forget getting it out there, forget it being a big break, just making it. And freeing myself of all that burden of, of you know, what the thing needs to be probably broke the ice for me in terms of finding my voice and I finally made something that was just purely me and it shows I mean I got the most compliments on that piece of anything really on my reel um, the one piece that I'm most proud of um, was the one I was also the most afraid to make right now um, the cultural conversation um, thankfully you know, we're finally having deep conversations about women and the way women are, are treated unfairly in our society and in the workplace and in specific industries. Um, so the thing that, but I've always been interested in men's issues and that's kind of a taboo subject um, because you hear, you hear men's issues and people scoff and they think, you know, men have everything. You know, men are in the top of the food chain and they have everything. And, and that's not true. In many ways, that's not true. In many ways, specifically being a man, um, you know, limits you. And so that's what that piece was about. It was about calling those things out. And the reason why I was afraid is because I was afraid that people would think that because I'm talking about men's issue that I don't care about women's issue, or, or I think men's issues are greater, or it's a, or it's a, it's a competition, and, and that's not the case. It's, it's more, there's so many great people saying great things uh, in regards to women's issues that I, I feel I don't have anything meaningful to say that, that someone smarter, someone more eloquent, someone you know, more experienced is, is saying. But there's something that I do have to say that isn't being said, which is the ways in which being a man you know, you know, men commit suicide more than women. Um, men die on the job more than women. Men, you know, life expectancy is lower than women. And all these things that that we don't talk about. And um, so, you know, putting my you know putting my art out there and telling that message, I was afraid I would be labeled like, oh, he's a misogynist. You know, you know, he's one of those men's rights people. And and that's not the case. It's not a competition. It's you know, I, I consider myself a humanist, which is, you know, I, I, I'm passionate about the, the, the total flourishing of the human experience, man, woman, gay, straight, bi, old, young, whatever it is. Um, and so I'm most proud of that because when, I, when people watch it, it they, they find it very shocking um, and very uncomfortable. And that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted people to be very uncomfortable when they read and they see these facts put out in front of them um, because it should make us uncomfortable. And we need to start having conversations about these health issues that, that um, affect men specifically because they're men. I mean, the most recent project that I can think of that inspires me and kind of knocked me back was Beyonce's Black is King. It's beautiful it's well done it's musical it's unapologetically black and it's something that beyonce doesn't have to do she doesn't have to make some political statement about what's going on in the world she can just put out mediocre material with her in it shaking her ass and it'll sell millions she doesn't have to do what she does but she does do it she does make a political statement and put it on 
the biggest platform out there for everyone to see in every household. And she does force the conversation, even though she doesn't have to, even though it probably doesn't pay as well as other things. But she does it anyways because she cares. And that, and it's good. <laughs> and at the end of the day, it's good. It's brilliant. It's beautifully done. I mean, what more can I say? It's, it's Beyonce. I don't necessarily feel any obligation right now to address the political or social upheaval going on today. I do naturally because I'm interested in those subjects. But um, I kind of address that stuff in my daily life. It's, you know, when I walk down the street and, and, and you know, at night and someone crosses the road or, or when I'm followed in a, a department store, you know, I live that stuff. So the idea that I have to, I have to now be Frederick Douglass when, you know, behind the camera um, is ridiculous because we don't ask the same of white people. We don't ask the same of people in majority or people in places of privilege um, I think the biggest thing I can do to push that the conversation forward and you know make a statement is to just be is to just be here have a seat at the table and be me creatively I am most excited about um, seeing more diversity you know around the industry and seeing um, and collaborating with people, you know, from different walks of life. Um, you know, there's a big conversation right now I have with my um, peers about what's going on, about how suddenly the industry, you know, because of the events of last summer, the industry is now, you know, they want to see more black people as if we just existed as of 2020. Um, and there is a cynical response to that, that sometimes I have, and I have to stop myself. The cynical response is like, you know, oh, now you want me because, you know, it's in vogue to, to, to want black people. And it's, you know, black people are now, you know, the hot thing or whatever. Um, and I have to stop myself and I have to remind my, my peers we have to stop doing that because the truth is that guy who who has a rich dad who bought him a, you know, a red camera, um, who is, you know, a working director, you know, because of his nepotism, he doesn't lose sleep at night about how he got his opportunity. He doesn't, you know, it doesn't stop him a bit knowing that, you know, if he wasn't rich or if he wasn't white, or if he wasn't, you know, he didn't know someone that he wouldn't be where he is. So why should we lose sleep at night? Because the the reason our door of opportunity was open was because we're black, but because we were we are, you know, a, a, a diversity hire somewhere. And I know it sucks, and we don't want to be that. But if he's not losing sleep over it, we can't either. Sure, we want our opportunity to to come about in a different way, but we don't get that choice. And the, the best thing is to, if a door is opening, is to run right through it and, and kill it and show them that, like, they made the great decision and I deserve to be here because uh, I'm the shit.